Next on, uh, joining us is uh, Alejandra Villagra. She's managing director in the markets and securities uh, services division of City. She's also the head of City Velocity, City number one's ranked digital platform for institutional clients. Ali uh, has been an invaluable leader of Finas, representing City on our board since its very inception, and then in her tenure, first as a vice chair and then chair of our board. Not only that, but Ali has been a huge advocate of our movement in our firm, which is now actively contributing more broadly for open source in this industry. Earlier this year, Ali has also stepped up to chair our diversity and inclusion committee, who's working to advise Finas on concrete actions we can take to grow diversity in our team, our board, and our community. This is a fundamental area where concrete action is needed now, as diversity remains a huge issue, both in financial services and in the open source community. So Ali joins us today to talk about building an inclusive community by sharing her own personal experience. Please join me in welcoming Ali Villagra. Hi everyone. It is such a pleasure to be here with you all today, albeit over Zoom, not, not as good as in person, but um, a pleasure nonetheless. I'm absolutely delighted um, and honored to be here to speak with you a bit about uh, Finos diversity and inclusion efforts and a little bit of my own experience in the space as well. So with that, I'll get to it. The first time I stepped onto City's trading floor, I was completely awestruck, excited, and beyond intimidated. I studied social sciences at Dartmouth, and to be honest, I did not know what a stock or a bond was. I did corporate recruiting because it seemed my 21-year-old self lazy not to, and since my friends were, then lo and behold, I'm in New York City at a final round interview talking about a world I barely knew even existed. There's a lot that is fuzzy about that day, but three things stood out. Number one, the trading floor. It was intense. Number two, an extremely kind, extremely kind administrative assistant named Ellen, who must have read the terror on my face because she complimented the new bag that I bought from a big day. And number three, my interview with a very confident, very warm and very pregnant SUNY Harford. Almost on the spot, I knew that I was meeting a new North Star. That day, SUNY took an incredibly important place in my heart and in my brain because I wanted to be just like her. She had important clients, she was the boss of a big team, and yeah, apparently she was about to be a mom too. And there was her name. Oh, SUNY, what was it? I didn't know. I didn't ask. I just knew that on some level, it was like my name. It was different, but here she was. So preparing for this talk, and in fact, right now, uh, made me really, really nervous. I knew from the moment that I said yes, I was going to stress about it until it was over. I also knew that I absolutely needed to say yes to be visible in the way I'm asking my colleagues at Finos, at City, and in the broader open source community to make efforts to see that underrepresented people are visible. So here I am. After stressing about saying yes, I quickly moved on to stressing about what I could possibly say to you all over Zoom, in a pandemic, and in a moment of reckoning with racial injustice. Everything I could think to say just seemed really unimportant on a relative basis. So finally, I settled in on what I know best, my own story. My tiny, tiny sliver of an experience that might personalize for you all why representation matters, how it happens, how it shaped my career and brought me to you today. Since that day, when I first met SUNY on the trading floor, I've had a lot of ups and downs in my career, like everyone. 
I've had moments of pride. I've had moments of disappointment. I've had times when I was sure I would not make it in the world of finance and moments when I knew this was exactly the right place for me. But this talk is about representation and why it matters through my eyes. And the story I'm telling is about how important it's been to me each step of the way to see a person I aspire to be. It is proof, hard data, evidence that it can be done. The list of reasons my career has been successful is full of intentional interventions. It's full of luck, setbacks, successes, and my own stubborn competitive nature. And while SUNY and other senior women have been my North Stars, I have benefited enormously from men who've been fierce advocates and mentors, who've taken chances on me and put their faith into my abilities. I've also worked with incredible teams, women, men, black, East Asian, Indian, white, straight, gay colleagues who have poured their talents into our shared goals. And more importantly, who believed in me as a leader. They believed in me as a leader and in doing so created a self-fulfilling prophecy. Representation takes a village. It takes effort from everyone, the role models who prove it's possible, the leaders and the managers who set the stage and the colleagues who embrace it. For those of you listening who are in the minority, I see you, I am rooting for you. You can do this. For those of you empowered to change the numbers, identify the underrepresented talent in your organizations and give them an opportunity to lead. For those of you who work for Black, for Latino colleagues, for women, for anyone in the minority in your world, embrace and accept them. You have more power than you know to help them succeed. I'm here speaking to you today because Finos has made diversity and inclusion a priority. Gab, the Finos leadership team, and my colleagues on the board entrusted me with the responsibility to serve as vice chairman, then chairman of the board during an exciting but really challenging time for our organization. But beyond this one example, we are working to define our diversity and inclusion strategy by setting representation goals for ourselves for our board of directors, and we'll be reaching out to you, our open source community, to help us grow the number of underrepresented people in our ranks. If even one person reaches out on the back of today, that will be progress. So bear with me through one more story, just one more, uh, later in my career to drive home the point. In November of last year, having recently taken over as the head of Velocity at City, I was asked to present my strategy for the platform to the heads of the trading division and their management team. 20 minutes or so before I was due to speak, I was invited into the room. There were about 40 people in there and a lot of jackets sort of slung over the back of, backs of chairs. The room was almost entirely men my heart rate absolutely went through the roof. I felt really, really intimidated and nervous, and that's not something I typically feel. Among the senior people in the room was Deidre Dunn, the recently promoted co-head of our global rates business. I was close to Deidre and sent her an email from my phone saying, I am really nervous. I was sitting in a chair by myself, kind of off to the side, away from the conference table. She replied right away saying she totally understood how intimidating the room felt. And she reminded me that I know a lot more about what I was presenting than anyone else in the room and that I was here to teach everybody something. And she kind of nudged me and she said, you should take a seat at the table. You should take a seat at the table, she said. So my heart pounded and I pulled up my chair and I found a little spot at the tightly packed table. Thank you.